Hey there, this is Chad from Zombie Fight Shark, and this is episode one, part two of Too Many Plugins. And we are discussing Brazilian Studios Chamber Orchestra. In part one, we discuss strings, and this is part two, we're discussing brass and woodwinds. Let's take a listen to this piece that features them, and then we will talk about it. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed writing it. Um, so, in uh, if you if you watched my shootout video, then you might know the free orchestral library shootout video. You might know it was a little bit harsh on VSCO, um, and I said some things that I regret. You know, we all do that sometimes, and. Um, now, in hindsight, um, now that I've spent a little more time with it, uh, I take all those things back. Um, so sorry to uh, Sam, who created it. Um, I should have spent more time with it before I jumped to judgment. Um, so uh, like the strings, uh, in, in this, so this is part two of episode one. Uh, but like I said in part one, um, you do have to uh, put a little bit more work in and that you have to have some attention to detail in regards to um, what you're going to get as a final outcome. If you rush through a piece, you're going to get a piece that sounds not so great. If you take your time with articulations and try to massage the best quality out of it that you can, uh, you do get something that's pretty darn respectable for a free plugin. So uh, again, this is, uh, like I said in part one, this is the Big Cat version, which is a VST. Works a lot like a contact instrument. Um, and we got key switching down here. And then uh, I've got it on trumpet right now. So I'm gonna try to not, um, I'm gonna kind of rush through these a little bit because uh, this would be an hour long video if I if I took as much time as I did on the strings. So um, so let's get into it. Um, trumpet, uh, great trumpet sound, uh, great solo trumpet sound. So uh, and it's great for chords. And I mean there if there were more velocity levels it would be better but uh just so you kind of had a little more round robin but uh this is one of the instruments that uh, if if i i believe i noticed that there are multiple velocity levels in a lot of the instruments um and uh the the quality is there um and it sounds a lot like a real person playing who's not um, principal chair of the London Symphony Orchestra. Um, you know, it's wonderful to have like when you can, you can spend a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars and get uh, some incredible orchestral trumpet sounds, whatever. And it, they're performed by someone who uh, has been playing their instrument and perfecting it at the highest professional level for, for 40 or 50 years in some cases. And so it sounds amazing. But sometimes you want it to sound like the guy down the street who just plays every once in a while, and you want it to sound a little bit rougher. Um, that super polished sound is not always perfect for all occasions, and um, and this is this is kind of a little bit of both. You've got some some notes sound great, and some notes are a little rough. And uh, I think any trumpet player who's uh, honest about their craft will will tell you that 
um, and any any instrumentalist of any sort will tell you that um, yeah I'm uh, this area of my instrument I can really sound good or I play good in this key um, or um, I play good at this volume level I mean all, all, all kinds of things we all have our specialties and uh, and and we all have our weaknesses so uh, and this trumpet is a lot like that. Um, it, it has some really good areas and has some areas that are a little bit weaker. Um, when you get into the upper end, weird, a couple weird notes. So, and, and that seems to, that's common with a lot of these, especially with these free libraries and even the pay ones on the high end. Sometimes those upper end notes just sound funny and I don't know what it is about capturing those and they're, they're real piercing in the mix. Um, you have to be really careful with those. Um, so just that's, that's the only major thing I can say to be aware of, um, on this one. And just like the last video, I'm just going to keep clicking that articulation thinking it's a drop down. Um, but articulations, uh, sustained staccato, vibrato, And I really like that. Uh, it sounds great. Um, the mutes is fun. Um, I love muted trumpet. This mute one, and there's mute one and there's mute two. Mute two, I don't know trumpet mutes well enough to be able to tell what the difference is there, but mute two is kind of what I think of as the classic trumpet muted sound. And, um, and I fiddled with, uh, uh, it's, it's not, some of this is not so good with legato. And so I fiddled with the attack because I was trying to get a better attack on the mute sound because the attack was a little harsh if I was doing like kind of a faster legato passage. And it seemed to just be a placebo button. Um, I couldn't tell that it did anything. So another funny little quirk to be aware of. Um, could have just been an oversight in programming. Um, but anyways, and then you got your sustained, forte sustained piano, um, which I believe is just the samples from the other sustain. And they've just separated them into uh, forte and into piano. Okay, let's go to another instrument real quick. Uh, horn, one of my other favorite instruments. <laughs> And it has a little bit of overblowing on some notes. And you hear that. So that's something to be aware of there. That's a real player playing it. Kind of, they're kind of swinging up to that note there when on the, on the harder attack. And so similar, uh, I think you have all the same, well, you, you, know, you do have mute. So uh, don't have two different mutes, but yeah, you, know, you only need one. And nice and warm. Yeah, and you can hear it. It's that same, same sample. Here's the sustain. very warm sound so there's horn um love it live it uh own it uh trombone it has some overblowing on some of the notes Let's drop an octave so a little bit more attack it's not like a harsh overblowing but you get you definitely get some more attack on some of the notes um and you got your staccatos and you can hear the so similar to what i'd said in the uh, strings sometimes you can hear it change over in the um you can hear the sample flip over and there'll be some volume issues there where it's either normalized weird or something else is going on that's pretty smooth though that's not too bad um some of them it's more noticeable than others uh so staccatos then your sustains same as the other one uh no mute 
no mute on the trombone. So that's okay, though, because we got old trombone to make up for it, which is a cool little instrument. I was like, what is this? And so on my free library, um, uh, my free, li free orchestral library shootout, um, I, I did a little kind of nod to Peter Gunn um, using buzz. And uh, in the fall setting. So I, I personally just love that that was something that got thrown in because it's a trombone. If you can't do a couple of those like kind of signature things like that, that was a nice touch. Um, and I like that it's called old trombone because uh, old instruments don't have the same sound as, as brand spanking new ones. Um, and I haven't done a side by side to see if there's a real significant difference, but there is definitely a timbre difference between the two instruments. And when you put them together, um, you do get a better quality sound. Uh, so that's something to be aware of is just, uh, put them together and, uh, uh, and, and make magic. Um, it makes you make yourself a little trombone section. Um, and it, it brings a lot more realism to it. Uh, tuba, tuba is a problematic instrument in a lot of these free libraries. Um, this one has fewer problems, I will say. Um, you usually with tuba getting a lot of articulations is rare. I don't know why, cause you sampled, there was a person there and you were sampling them. I don't know why you can't, people don't get all the, in, all the different articulations cause tuba does some cool stuff too. Um, but you got your important one, important couple, sustain, staccato, and then the sustain forte, sustain piano. And, 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 and the problem with a lot of these is when you get into the low notes, it starts to get kind of like wonky and they, they stop there and I think that's probably for the best because a lot of these those lowest notes are almost unusable because typically uh, uh, those are hard to play so and unless you've got a really good player those notes may sound a little funky so uh, so anyways uh, Tuba is your friend and um, love him um, so let's see, uh, we're getting into some woodwinds, piccolo. Um, so let's go to the other end of the keyboard here. It's a little, uh, this piccolo is a little airy sounding for my taste. Um, and you only have sustain and staccato here. I um, mean, which really is fine because doing much else with piccolo, um, yeah, and this, in. This is one of my least favorite instruments in the entire orchestra because um, it's, yeah, I think it's just one sample per note and it's real airy sounding. Um, and piccolo, if you've if ever heard one in person, has this pure piercing tone that can be really beautiful or it can be really annoying uh, depending on who's playing uh, in their skill level um, and so this is this is definitely not an, on the annoying side um, but it, it's one of the weaker points of the library but because there's a flute the flute is decent um, and you have a lot of the same you have a lot of overlap with range and this the flute just sounds a lot better than the piccolo does and you have more articulation options um, so you got your sustain you got your staccato and that vibrato is very nice like this is this is one of the instruments where it could easily be a solo instrument um, and then your two different sustain options as well um, expressive vibrato versus regular vibrato. A little different. I think the attack might be a little different there. So a little bit longer before the vibrato kicks in. Uh, oboe. Awesome to double with the flute. Because it sounds just like one in this case. Now it's sounding like an oboe. Um, so, and um, 
in all the libraries that I have, uh, oboe is one of those that I've noticed like really cuts. Uh, it will just cut through the orchestra. Like I usually turn it, turn the volume way down, and it still cuts through. And it's that timbre it has. It's just uh, you know, it's real mid focused and just seems to just cut through everything. It blows me away every time. Like how it's not even that loud of an instrument. It's just literally the timbre. It's focused on one area of the spectrum. And it just seems to be just pierced through, not in a bad way. Um, uh, it just it's like a it's like an arrow shooting shooting through a target or some metaphor like that. Um, anyways, this is one that um, I was I, I was again pretty pleased with. Solid sound, usable as a uh, as a solo instrument. And you got your uh, sustain, staccato, vibrato, um, and then sustain, forte, sustain, piano. So um, definitely have to use it sparingly because uh, you don't need, there's no oboe section. You don't want to combine these because that doesn't really work out. That's just kind of your principles of orchestration uh, uh, in, in practice there. Um, solid clarinet as well um suitable for uh solo kind of like the oboe and the flute um this one was sampled really well it is very playable um i have no complaints about this one and i this is i played in uh, clarinet that was my first instrument so this sounds this i mean it's kind of sounds like a college level player to me it may be maybe somebody more talented than that i don't know uh or more experienced but um the i like the real attack i like the real attack and and um it sound you can hear you can hear the tonguing um, when you listen really closely and you can you can hear it's like you can hear the air going through the instrument. So again, clarinet, awesome. Bassoon, we're almost out of woodwinds. Bassoon gets a little weird in the upper register here, which is true in real life. And I think this might uh, there was a couple of notes where I was having some funkiness and I think it was like it was like there were two libraries that had been combined and they didn't quite match when it got to the upper register um, because that's the sort of thing that's going to be really player specific uh, in terms of the quality of the sound that you get um, but we got down to that B flat B flat sounds good and I, I'm going to say this one also solo quality for sure. Um, so that's all your woodwinds and brass. I'll just repeat one more time that if you're using this and you're trying to compose for a large orchestra, these are mostly solo instruments. Uh, or in the case of woodwinds and brass, I think they're all solo instruments. So you're going to have to have multiple instances and you're literally going to be writing for each individual player or you can copy and paste um, in my experience what i have found you get the best result from is to uh actually play if you can if it's not too hard of a part um and you got the keyboard chops play each one and you'll get unique art you know you'll get your kind of unique articulation and unique attack and um your timing won't be perfect and it'll sound so much more real. Um, and you'll be real close, but it's not going to be perfect. And you don't want it to be perfect because that's when it starts to sound fake, when it's too perfect. And uh, again, like the strings, um, when you're playing with these instruments and you have staccato, if you just tap it, you don't get the full sustain. See, there's a full sustain. So, which is just like a real instrument, a uh, real player. You got long staccatos, you got short staccatos. Staca short staccatos you got spiccatos um so just be aware that's one of those detail things that really pays off if you when you're when you're writing with this one so that is it for uh vsco uh woodwinds and brass um thanks for listening and uh part three is going to be uh, the percussion. I'm going to spend a lot of time on percussion and then we will kind of just touch on pianos and organs, etc. etc. Um, so I uh, hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Cheers.